Okay, let's begin. Let's get all this set up. That's the competition. Let's get rid of this. Don't need this. Happy Thursday, praise be the spiral. Hope everyone's doing well. Oh, my, my mic keeps coming loose. It's very annoying. Oh, steps in his Christmas cats. <laughs> uh, all right, give me a second to just open the right the right file. I've got the uh, I've got the challenge open. So yeah, I launched the challenge today. Hopefully everybody's um, interested in it. I, th I think it's a good one this time. I think it's um, I think it's 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 seemingly simple, but I think there's going to be some sneaky ways to uh, to optimize it. Um, what am I looking for here? Oh, yeah, projects. Check and wait. There we go. For some reason, I've created that file. Okay, don't need that. I'm just going to nudge the music down as a slide. It's a little bit loud. There we go. Okay, cool. So tonight's going to be an interesting one. So first of all, I want to uh, uh, go over the the competition briefly. Then we'll get into some checkanoid. Um, so what we're going to do tonight with checkanoid before I talk about the competition is um, we're just going to fix where we were with the doors last time and then we've got a new map from Andy so um, I'm going to uh, I'm going to try and connect Andy on Discord so he can chat about it and he can answer any questions you might have as well um, ah, check my background wait why is there a check my background who wait what what should that be there Ah, okay. I did it through the uh through the private message. Okay, that's all right then. So yeah, we'll probably try and get Andy on on Discord. Um, uh, down at the line, is an error in the May compo A seven down at the line? Verify. Okay, let me have a look at that. Uh, I mean, it really doesn't matter because the verifier is. Oh yeah, don't know why that's there. Yeah. Okay. Cool. All right. I'll, I'll update. I'll update that uh, at some point. Yeah. Do you know? What? I will give you AMK points for that. I think that's worthy of the. I think that's worthy of some AMK points. Uh, I mean, I'm pretty sure everybody else spotted it, but you were the first person to tell me, so there you go. Um, it's because of this mouse. I've got loads of buttons bound to the side of the mouse. I need to turn them off because I keep pressing them by accident. I need to get a new mouse, actually. My mouse wheel's broken um, when I press it down, the button pressing down. So, um, But, yeah, there you go. Well done. Five, five points for that. Um, so I'm drinking vodka soda again tonight. I've not put lime in it tonight. But I've got a sprig of rosemary in it just to add a little bit. Oh my god. I'm not sure how much vodka I put in there, but it tastes like a lot. Um okay, so let's go over the competition. So um I will actually briefly bring it up. Um actually I'll bring it up in, in this I've got it in the folder here. Uh, so the idea is to create uh actually I haven't got the Oh my god, I do. I keep pressing the button on the side of the mouse. That's really irritating. Um, all right, not to worry, not to worry. Uh, so somewhere on my desktop, I do have the images for this. Uh, so I'm going to open... Oh no, I don't. Where have I put it? Have I put it in here? Oh my god, where have I put it? No mind, I'll download it from the Discord. So the idea is, is you're going to be given three numbers. They're going to be put into a zero page, uh, addresses two, three, and four. Uh, these numbers are going to correspond to the screen codes for uh, letters of the alphabet or numbers. So only numbers and letters. And the idea is, is you're supposed to draw these, uh, draw these letters on the screen in a kind of shadow font like that. Um, it's a very specific space, a place where you're supposed to draw them. I've detailed that in the rules. Um, 
uh, and they must have a shadow. They must be using um, uh, they must be using character one hundred and sixty, which is a reverse space character, to draw it. Um, and the it's the same as the, the kaleidoscope. It's the uh, it's you do it in the smallest amount of code and the fastest amount of cycles. We multiply the two numbers together to get a get a value, um, which will be your um, your score. We'll do a, a, a seeded value, which I will pick before the stream, so that everybody gets exactly the same same letters, um, and that whoever can get to the the top of the leaderboard will win. Um, top the top of the uh, scoreboard for this particular challenge that is uh, will win the nexus a7 for may and i just got a bit of rosemary in my mouth god that that vodka is really strong god i'm also drinking tropical fruit cider tonight as well um so the harness is pretty much the same as it was for the kaleidoscope with some small changes just to facilitate this um, and I think this will be an interesting one because you have to figure out how and when to load the um, how and when to load the uh, the, the character ROM in. Um, do you do you load it in bit by bit as it's needed? Do you copy it somewhere else first and take a hit at the beginning? Um, do you load one character at a time? Do you load one line at a time? So on and so on. Uh, because to do that, obviously, you have to map things in and out. So that's that's an interesting kind of challenge. Where where and when do you do that? Um, secondly, I think because the um, because the image is simpler than the kaleidoscope, um, the cycle time should be shorter in general. I would expect the cycle times to be shorter for these things, um, and that means that the balance between the cycles and the bytes shifts a little bit. Um, with 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 the you know the balance being uh, being skewed a little bit uh, towards um it's okay to use more bytes sort of thing whereas before it wasn't because you were your cycles the higher your cycles are the more important it is to keep your byte count down um so yeah anyway that's that's the challenge it's it's going to run for the next three weeks um i will uh we will go through the uh the the entries on the last saturday stream of this month uh and the winner will um take away the nexus uh take away the nexus board uh, on Speaking of which, I have printed off the case for Docs now. So there's Docs uh, Mega 65 case ready to go. Um, I'm just waiting on a VGA cable. Um, I thought I had some more, but I haven't. So I've had to order a few more. So um, I've ordered ordered that. It should come tomorrow. Um, and then I will I'll proceed to program the SD card and get it, get it ready to go. So, yeah, that was printed today. So... I'm a little bit ahead of time this time, which is good. Um, so yeah, anyway, that that's the that's this uh, the May challenge. Uh, hopefully, I'll get lots of people joining it. Um, it seems people have kind of taken to it already. It seems to have grabbed people's interest, which is nice. Um, um, which makes me realise I probably did pick the right one because I I had another one which was a little bit more complicated um and not really uh, it would have been it would have been trickier i think to set up this was easier for me to set up i'm, I'm not going to say what the other one was because i'm probably going to use it on the next one um but needless to say the the next the 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 one the other one that i was going to do was more about um pure algorithms so it's more about kind of figuring out the best way to to do a particular task that it wasn't wasn't graphical at all it was just a it's just an algorithm um uh, there, there was a graphical component to it but the graphical component was not something you had to worry about there's a graphical component on the screen and you have to use an algorithm to work something out about it so um but i i, I can't really say because i'll give it away too much and then i'll give people a head start on, on it and i don't really want to do that Okay, so anyway, that's the that's the challenge. All the code is um, in the in the zip file that's pinned to the channel. Um, there is an example in there of how to kind of just set up and run it uh, in Kick Assembler, and Durian has provided a, 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 a an Acme version as well. Um, and you can use that to uh, to to launch your your code uh, from a separate file or or however you want to do it but basically the only thing i want to receive from you guys is the uh is the uh the code that goes at c000 uh, and nothing else 
um, because you will be judged on the size of that file. Okay, let's uh, let's crack on with Checkanoid then. I've added points to you all. Let me start the quiz uh, and let's have a look. So as I say, what we're going to do on Checkanoid first, we're just going to check the um, the door stuff um, because we were in the middle of doing that last time and I believe we had been mostly working. There was just a tiny little bit um, that was kind of broken. Um, I think on the horizontal doors, I can't remember exactly. And then we're going to work on uh, the new map. So I'll just quickly show you. I've got the I've got the entire map now from Andy. Um, so uh, we're going to work on getting this put in. Now this is probably going to take the entire stream just to get this to work, um, because there's various things we need to do uh, in order to make this work. For a start, we need to reduce these characters down. So we need to make sure we get rid of duplicates. Um, we need to convert it from a tile map uh, to a single character map because we don't use tiles in the in the Technoid loader uh, level loader um and then we need to work out the new screen locations because obviously the screen numbers are going to change um so we need to work out what the new screen numbers are uh, and then we probably need to set up each screen one at a time and go through and because and, i need to remember like how i was using materials how i was using colors uh, and things like that because there's a lot of there's a lot of little things in it that were um very specific to how I'd set up. So, but this is the, we've got the, the whole map in place now. Um, so it'd be cool if we can get this running tonight, because then we can actually fly through the entire map. Um, uh, but pretty good. We, we're, um, we're, we're on, we're on course to get this done possibly this year. If we, if we, uh, crack on with it, no guarantees. Uh, it's done when it's done. That's, that's what I always say. Uh, oh, in other news as well, uh, the uh, Mega 65 version of Toxic Frenzy is now on the Mega 65 file host. Um, you can download that now from there. Um, it will load in XEMU, but not quite uh, work properly because um, it can't load things from disk uh, using my disk loader. My disk loader doesn't work on XEMU. Um, but you can you can load it up. You can see the intro. You can hear the music. Um, but it will work on the Mega sixty five, and it runs quite well. I'm quite quite pleased with that. So that's there for you to grab now. Um, and hopefully, um, I will be starting another port soon. Um, and I've been speaking to somebody uh, on the Mega sixty five team uh, about porting uh, an old Amiga public domain game. I won't say which one. I'll wait until um, I wait till I get some more information about it. But um, that may be happening fairly soon. Uh, and if that's the case, it will alternate between um, between that and Perseus on Saturdays and, and maybe uh, on Tuesdays as well. I'm going to focus on um, quite heavily on getting that done uh, fairly fairly quickly because um, it is a it's a relatively short game, but it's a nice game. Uh, good music uh, or okay graphics and stuff. Um, uh, but it will be nice to have an official uh, an official port as well that we've got we've got permission to do so um so that may be coming up soon um okay cool um right let's crack on let's take a look at first of all let's just let's just run it and see what happens because i cannot for the life of me remember where we're at with this um i need to close all these windows down don't i I haven't really added any more backgrounds uh, at the moment. Uh, I did add uh, some that Step sent me, but that's all I've added. Uh, and I've got an idea for, um, you know, I said there's like series of uh, images. I've got an idea for doing those as well. So there may be some, um, there may be some additional information when you unlock. Um, uh, still nothing oh you have to do it when the uh when the timers um when the timers says ready uh i do believe that is a valid background i think um what's the saying um i can't remember what i was saying now never mind Anyway, so uh, I'm I'm looking forward to for doing lots of ports on the on Omega sixty five. It's it's really fun to actually uh to port stuff for more so than than I thought it was going to be. Um, 
and working even working with the disassembled um code was was not bad at all so the vodka speaks already yeah okay cool so oh there isn't a door here oh does it wait did, did I, I thought i put a door in maybe i didn't Oh, did I not have a door there? Okay, right. So that's what we need to look at. We just need to put a door in and just make sure it works because I don't want to jump away from that code um, until I know for a fact that it's working. So uh, I did have a door there. Yeah, I thought I did. At least the animated one. Yeah, yeah, I thought so. Uh, let me take a look. And then hopefully in the next 20 minutes, half an hour or so, we will, we will get this... Um, get this working and we can move on to uh to doing the new map um at which point we'll see if we can get andy on discord and you can all ask ask him questions and he can answer my questions as well if i've got any okay let's uh let's take a look so this is the door code uh, and we're looking at screen code as well so we, we want to take a look at the map code now obviously all of these are going to change the screen numbers are going to be completely changed this is one of the first things uh, we'll need to do uh, to make sure that the screen code's in the right places we'll also have to define where we start again to make sure they were in the right place um, but i believe we're in here and we were setting up doors so yeah we added a door here uh, it's open no okay that should oh did i have to go off the screen and then back again or something I didn't think I did, but maybe I've maybe I've completely changed something because it doesn't seem to be the same. Uh, why is that not loading? Okay. It's been a busy old week so far. Um, Dot Cosmos is now finished. It's gone to be uh, be put onto cartridge now, so that's good. Um, oh wait, I saw a door. Oh, the door, oh, that's a door over there, but that's not the. I took it out when testing the horizontal. Well, it's still there. Though. That's the thing. It's there. Look. Um. So I don't know why that's that's not appearing. Uh. Maybe I took the updates out. No, I don't know. We'll 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 check in a second. We'll we'll figure out what's going on with it. Um, it doesn't seem to be there though. That's that's the thing, because I I thought I'd put one down here as well. I don't know from what I, what I recall, and that's not there either. So actually, is 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 it actually working? Yeah. Okay, things are working. So okay, so maybe maybe this add door is not doing anything. See, I keep pressing. That is so annoying. I need to figure out how to turn that off. Oh my god. Oh. oh god damn it. Uh oh my hey, there we go, make sixty five. I knew it was in there. Okay. Um, God damn it. Okay, why is that not showing? So we've got a doors update here. Uh, and we have doors add here. Okay, let's just see if this gets called. Thankfully, the breakpoints work now, so. Just got to remember not to press that mouse button on the side. I don't know why that all of a sudden started doing it. I must have turned it on in some config. So let me have a look if I can turn it off in IQ. Uh, is that IQ? No, where's IQ? Wait, IQ is not there at all. Why is it not there? That's weird. Hmm, okay. Okay, not sure why that's not there, but okay, it's fine. I just need to be less fat thumbed. Okay, so it is trying to add the door. 
uh, but it's not rendering for some reason. So uh, let's double check by going over. So remember, we turned the particles off while it was there, and the particles are still showing all over the place. So it means there's nothing being rendered at all. Um, this is what I don't understand. I'm sure this was working when I last left this. Um, oh, there we go. I just had an RTS in the file, that's all. Just me being stupid. Okay, still not seeing it there. That's weird. We've got another RTS somewhere that it shouldn't be. Uh, okay, so this will... Um, do you have any updates doors on this screen? RTS, if not. Okay, so if I put a breakpoint here... Um, this will only break if there's a door on that screen. So maybe we've just not got a door on that screen. Uh, hey, Sean, how's it going? Okay, so it's definitely trying to draw the door. Um, or it's trying to update the door anyway. So what on earth is... Why is this suddenly not showing for some reason? Okay, let's go to here. It states the same door is not animating. Okay, so this will only, ha this will only draw if the door is animating. Uh... So we come in here, and that's no, that's draw door. Hang on, what have I done? I've done something. Ah, hang on. Copy door chars here. Ah, that's right. We were doing the door. We we're doing the char copy for the door. That's what it was. I remember now. I remember exactly where we're at now. Cool. All right. Well, this this is going to be pretty easy to do. So. So what we were doing um, was basically uh, we were just copying um, characters from these arrays or indexes from these. Um, what we needed to do was actually copy these characters. Um, so, yeah, there you go. Let me just move that over so I can see what <laughs> Even a god can't sort out that mess here. Yeah. Oh, oh, okay. I think this was the, this was the problem I was having with the copy door routine. The copy door routine was doing weird things. If I go on a screen with no doors, it's fine. You see there, it copies over the the, the wrong characters. So that's what we need to do. We need to work out why that's happening. Uh, and, and stop that from happening. Okay, so. Uh, hey, Thalamus. So we're just going to sort of going to fix this, um, this, this character loader piece of code here. Uh, and then we'll get on to putting the new map in. Uh, it seems kind of counterintuitive to be doing this um, when I'm about to change all the characters. But um, it's a good idea to have this all working so that I'm not... Um, I'm not looking at things that might be broken and thinking it's thinking it's the map when it's the code and and so on. So, um, okay. So I just got to remind myself exactly what I need to do here. So copy door chars basically needs to take um, font point. Okay. So this needs to take. Let Let's go through this in the in the debugger so we can see exactly what's happening. That's probably the best way to do this. Uh, actually, I don't do that. Do I do Shift F8, I think? Uh, or not? Make a debug. Oh, God, that's 
the button on the side of my mouse is driving me mad. I don't know why that suddenly suddenly started being active, but it is. What are you on about? Playing the artist, so it's the piss artist, right? Andy, can you time out Andy? <laughs> God damn it. Time yourself out, Andy Magic Knight. <laughs> oh God, what is going on? Something weird is going on. I don't know what it is. Let me, I'm going to close my keyboard thing down because. No, not you. I'm on about. I'm on about Andy Magic Knight. <laughs> He's being a naughty boy. He's not the Messiah. He's a very naughty boy. Uh, I I really don't know what's going on. This is really irritating me now. I need to just just load up IQ and turn all these things off. If it will even load up. Uh, I seem to have loads of extra actions on the buttons for some reason, but it says I haven't in here. So I don't know. Okay. But it, oh my God, it keeps trying to open things. There's the door corner. Yeah, it's not that now. I know I know what it is that's that's wrong. The the problem is now this um god now my mouse is really fast. This is not going well already, is it? All right, okay, let's have a look. Oh, Thalamus. Don't be mean to me today. Stop it. Okay, right. So here's the door char thing. So what this is going to do, this is going to load from our font pointer value and store it in C5 and C6. So let's go and find where that is in here. That is here. Okay. So if I step through this, okay, that gives me CB20, which is a somewhere in the char set which i can see definitely see here so this is where we're copying things to um and then the door font vec is going to be where we're copying from ah and that's actually not okay i can see exactly what i did wrong here I'm an idiot. So the reason why it was causing problems is because it was overriding some pretty, pretty uh, important stuff down in zero page. So Asgard, there we go. I think that's the Asgard everybody wanted. Because um, I know somebody was typing in Asgard uh, and I just grabbed the one I thought everybody would want, which is the one from um, from the Marvel Universe. Okay, no, it's still going wrong uh, because you can see it's obviously it's copying the wrong stuff into the wrong places here. But let's take a look at what that is, what it should actually be doing now. So font fetch. It's our door char location, which is this thing here. This is this binary here. Um, and if I was just to put, uh, if I just put door, oh, door char list. Stovacore is where Klingons go. I think it's called Stovacore. Yeah, some, I'm sure somebody will correct me if I'm wrong. I think it's Stovacore. Uh, it's font index a constant. Uh, uh, I, can, I don't know. 
I'm losing track of what I'm doing because I'm I'm trying to read chat and answer questions. And I probably should just focus on what I'm doing. Hang on. No, it's just a why why what why? Where is that actually being stored? That's a good question though there. That's a very good question. Uh oh it's yeah, it's a zero page value. I I need to stop doing this this capital letters. I need to stop doing that. Uh I do it all the time and it's it's really not a good idea, but um it's too late now anyway. So the idea is, is as we go through uh, the font, we're copying data from um, from this location here to this location here. So, and you can see that here, load font fetch to font vec. Okay, so load from font fetch, store in font vec. Yeah, we're doing that exactly. That's exactly what's going on here. Uh, so let me just turn all of the rest of the stuff off and just go through this a bit at a time uh no it's not missing a not missing a thing no I should have done this straight after the uh after the stream really when my head was still fresh on it because the problem is I'm not sit right. Let, let's let's just confirm that the door's working. So if we ignore if we ignore this code, so let's put the RTS. This must be what I was doing last time. Let's get rid of that break. Put the RTS back in. So then what happens is when the goes to draw the door, it draws based on this door char list. Now that door char list is filled in from uh, from in the uh, in the copy in here. It should be anyway. It doesn't look like it is, but it, it should be. Maybe we need to do that at some point. But then when it goes to draw the door, what it does is it loads uh, door char list, comma, X, and it gets the X from the char, char list up there. So if I just fill this number of door chars with one, what we should see uh, is, is this pattern here um, being drawn where the door is. At the moment, what we're seeing is is pattern zero being drawn, and obviously zero is is no good because zero is is the blank, which is why we're seeing blanks everywhere. What is going on? Oh, I'm on the wrong file. I do want to get that mouse. I'm going to get a new mouse. Any recommendations on a mouse to get? I'm going to keep this as a backup mouse, but I think I want a new new gaming mouse, preferably one with uh, uh, with MMO buttons on the side, uh, but not not a magic mouse. Is that a mouse, not a fucking toy? Sorry, <laughs> very aggressive there. <laughs> okay, cool. So that is actually working, but it's in the down. So let's just change that to uh. You love yours, but you're you're an Apple fan, so for you it it's kind of it kind of makes sense for you. Um, for me, it's like I I I I want a mouse that I can play games with, and I could never ever ever play games on a Microsoft on, on a on an Apple mouse because they're just not designed for it. Um, they're designed to look fancy, and that's about it. They're designed to look a bit kind of fancy on a on a creative's desk, and that's about it. Uh, as a practical thing, they're not very good. Uh, Asus Cerberus. I did look. I think it was the Asus Cerberus. I looked at actually as a potential replacement. It might have been that one. Uh, I can't remember what this screen macro function does now. Hang on. A door is vertical. Okay, so the length is all the same. That's right, of course. Yes, so it's vertical. What? Yes, it is. And that was the horizontal door. Right, okay, so finally, this should be the doors kind of working now, but with the wrong characters. You're very creative. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, I think the design of the of the Magic Mouse is, is it fits its purpose perfectly. It does it does exactly what um 
it does exactly what you would expect an Apple mouse to do, which is is to look very to to be functional, uh, even if it's not the most functional mouse in the world. Uh, I mean, it certainly could do with more buttons on it. Um, but it, it's it's built to look good in an Apple setup, right? And that's what it does. It looks good in an Apple setup. As a gaming mouse, though, no, it really isn't. Um, it's it's terrible. It's also got some weird design decisions in it as well. I like the way it charges and stuff, but um, but yeah, I, I get I get you know I get that if you if you own an Apple machine, you're going to want an Apple mouse, right? But um, if you own an Apple machine, you're not really a gamer anyway. You're not you're not going to be gaming, or not not very good good games anyway. Okay, yeah. So the door the doors do work. Um, it's just the characters that are wrong. Okay. Are they not what I, th I would have thought they would have been wirelessly charged as well. I, th I find it kind of crazy that they haven't haven't done that. Um, OK, uh, all right. OK, so that works. So the problem is, is we're, we're not copying the right characters into the right places. So the question is, why is that happening? Um, so let's put a breakpoint into here. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, it's not equal to loop, decrease charge counter. Let's do the breakpoint here. Uh, no, mm, no, actually, let's do it here. And let's run this in the debugger. This is the the kind of the only thing we need to do, and then we can get onto the onto the map editing stuff. Um, I could, I mean, I'm not going to spend too long on it. If it takes me too long, I'm just going to, I'm not sure if that loaded because I did it or whatever. Um, if it takes too long, then I will, um, I will, I will just leave, I'll write some comments in the code explaining what needs to be done. And then we'll move back into, uh, uh, we'll move, we'll move into doing the map stuff. Cause I would like to get that, get that in place. Like it, it might take me a, a stream or two to get that in place. So. Uh, oh, I put an RTS in dinner. Damn it. Okay, try again. Back in the day, it would have taken 15 minutes to assemble the code. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, we do have it a lot easier nowadays. We we don't have to um, we don't have to code too much before you can test it. You can you can test kind of very quickly. The iterations very fast. Um, saying that there are times when i will code maybe for an hour or two before i run run the code so i still do have a little bit of that mentality uh, but it's been a long time since i've had to wait for anything to to, to uh, assemble so it used to be so when i because i never did this as a job it was always just a hobby when i was younger but i never had a disk drive i only had a and i had a tape so an action replay um at, the, at my peak <laughs> i had an action replay so what i used to do was uh take snapshots because they had fast load so you could do like a quick load uh snapshot so i used to take snapshots before i ran things which was slow because it meant every time i wanted to run something i had to then save it to tape so just in case it crashed because obviously if it crashed you could lose everything so Okay, so we're stepping through the code. Let's take a look at these addresses. So uh, C3 and C5 are the two addresses we're looking at. So that says it's going to copy from um, OA100 uh, to CB. For, well, actually from, uh, no, from O, yeah, from OA100 to CB20. Okay. So if we step through that that's going to go through that's going to stay the same all right let's run and we should break again at that point and this should stay the same it shouldn't change anything it should just keep doing the same thing and just decrease that okay and then we appear in here and nothing has changed at all okay so now let me try putting so cb20 would be uh what would that be it'd be 96 so it'd be 
six four, I think. So if I fill this with six four, hopefully we should see whatever character that might be. Um, in fact, we can go and take a look in the uh, in the characters as it as it boot loads in, and we can see if it's actually working properly. So okay. Um... Uh, actually, it's doors. Doors is the first thing that loads in, isn't it? In this lower area, I think. Uh, can code load. Yeah. So oh eight hundred. Yeah. Okay. So that's correct. That's loading in the right place. I got my EverDrive as well for my uh, for my Nomad in the day. It's so cool. So nice having having all those games. Uh, our hand so so i do have a couple of mega drive. it's nice to have a few cartridges like i said i was happy to get the uh the terry jam and earl and the uh the uh the um uh, micro machine one but having an ever drive is just much much better because it gives you safe states as well uh we were trying to terminate the background okay so we should hit a break point there we go right so now if we go and have a look at the right screen which i never get right the first time there we go so i would expect it to be copied into zero zero eight into this location here that's what we're expected to see so if i if i run i should hit a break point ah but it has drawn an entire character into the right space and you can see there it looks correct as well if we run it again, it's just copying the same character in. Um, is that correct, though? Does that look like the door piece? Possibly, I guess. Um, okay, well, that's that's a good sign, at least, because that means that has worked. Uh, and you can see when you go into the game that... Um, God. Oh. <laughs> oh my god why can't i press anything correct tonight what is going on okay i think i'm i think i've i think i've crashed this damn it <laughs> oh man okay so uh let's let's advance this now to go through the entire font so well to, through the pieces that we need so what do we need to advance? So we need to advance door vo uh, the door font vector and door font fetch. So the font fetch is just going to be adding eight each time, which is this one here. That's just going to grab the next font in our door font. And then the font vec is this thing here. This is what actually fills in uh, the entire font. Um, so this should, I mean, I don't know why this wasn't working, but let's take a look. Could have maybe been something to do with this, but um, let's take a look. Let's see what happens. I do that. Okay, so we've loaded into the game. I've accidentally drawn in it, but whatever. Okay, so you'll see the font get loaded in up here. There you go. So that's the font for the first screen. And then we hit a break point. And this is the character, the first character that should load in, should load in here. And we do indeed see that. Then the next one should load right next to it, which it does. And so on. And you can see the door characters being loaded in. Uh, and we should have... But that should be it. And then it should stop. But it doesn't. It carries on, you see. Ah carries on because it needs to load the the horizontal door and then it's finished so i actually loaded in correctly as well so it wasn't that so you see how the doors loaded correctly and now if i move off screen you'll see that the new map data gets loaded into this position here so we're probably going to need to clear a door but yeah you can see there you go it's it's loaded in there and now it's going to load into a new but i don't know where it's going to load but it's going to load us somewhere in the middle here so yeah, it's loading there, you see. Uh, you can see the new door information gets loaded into the black spaces. And there we go. We're back here again. Okay, so 
so that's kind of working. Uh, the problem is uh, new debugger. No, it's the same, it's the same debugger, but it's good for. Uh, I don't often use that font page, um, but it's it's perfect for this because it's exactly what I need to be doing. So, okay, what do we need to be doing here then? Okay, we need to be taking the um, the door char character. No, wait, hang on. We need to take the font index and store it in door char counter. Oh, is this is this just doing it wrong? Am I doing something weird here? I think I am, Anna. Let's do this the other way around. So instead of instead of doing this, I'm gonna do this. Uh, it just it's just a bit easier to read, I think, and make sure we're going forward through the loop as well, which means we won't um, won't have any issues with having to do this. So I should just be able to load Y with the door char counter. Load the current font index. So that's this thing that we're counting up and down and store it in that value. Then the door font index. Uh, oh, it shouldn't wrap there though. This should be oh number of base shards. No, that is right. Okay, cool. I think that's I think that's fine. No, what do you want about? No TO. Yeah, I took it out. I don't need it anymore. Uh, don't even need that either. Yeah, it's not it's not needed at all. It's it's fine. Right, let's give it a try. You need to send me a background, Sean. Send me a background that you want on your name. Ah, I took it. Okay, fair enough. Okay, so this is still got the breakpoint in, so I'm just gonna have to quickly run through this hopefully. I'm going to do 20 of these. It's doing a lot more than 20, though, isn't it? Um, yeah, it's doing way more than 20. So something else has gone wrong here. No, no, it's door char counter. Door char counter is zero. We don't override that anywhere. But let's just do that. Actually, should I be using X? Doesn't look like I can't use it. That's fine. Let's use uh, let's use Y though, just to be sure, because that's what I'm using in the other loop up there. Shouldn't matter though, I don't think, but Oh, and that's not door char counter, that is uh Okay, that's that's a big problem. It should be door char list. Okay, I think I just made some errors in this last time when I was doing this. Um Hopefully now, oh, we're still going to get the break point, aren't we? Damn it, I should have taken the break out. Never mind, let's just quickly. Hey, there we go. We see a door open and some closes. Perfect. And if I go off the screen and come back, I'm just going to do that again. All right, I need to get rid of that break point. But we still get the same door. Cool. Excellent. So that, that's working. We'll, we'll take the break out and we'll do a quick test with the opposite door as well um but it should be fine i think 
uh, and then we'll move on to the map. So what I'm going to do in a second, when I confirm that this is working, um, I'm, first of all, I'm going to commit it so that I've got the, the latest working code uh, committed. Uh, and then I'm going to give Andy a call on Discord and uh, we can talk through the, uh, do, doing the map. Um, if he's up for that, I think he's. I think he is. We, we shall see. I don't know how this is going to work. It's probably. I guess if I just turn my desktop audio up, you should be able to hear him. Um, we shall see. Hopefully, it works. Um, is my desktop audio coming out of my headphone? Yeah, it should be. I think so. <laughs> yeah, I liked that one. I was pleased with that one. And there we go. The horizontal doors are working as well. Excellent. Right, cool. So let's get this. Uh, let's get this committed. I did like that one. This one is. This one's partly why I moved my uh, my my picture to the left bottom. Uh, my 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 camera. Um, so you could see him, you could see him here. I'm really bad at. It's reacting to the new series. Uh, okay, so let me. Uh, Source tree. Probably reacting to the code. Let's move that up there. Uh, Checkanoid. Okay. I'm just, just going to commit it. I don't care about commit message right now. Couldn't get into the new. C I quite like the new one. I kind of like the new one. It's all right. It's uh, I, I prefer it to Discovery. Um, uh, apparently Q is gonna is is potentially gonna be in the next uh, uh, series of Picard as well, next season of Picard, which I'm kind of looking forward to for years. Uh, okay, lots of things I need to commit in there, but okay, whatever. I just see him running or creaking around. Yeah, yeah. I thought it was all right. I I, I didn't mind it at all. It's uh, I mean, it, the problem is, is you're never going to see a Star Trek show that's like the original Star Treks because that that kind of creature of the week thing is not something they seem to want to go with anymore. If you want that, you kind of have to go with uh, uh, the Orville. That's the, the closest you're going to get to it. Um, you're not going to see it with with Star Trek, unfortunately. Okay, so next next thing we're going to do is we're going to drop this map in. Uh, so let's see if I can give Andy a call. Are you ready? Is I don't know if he's there. Let's 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 give him a try. Let's just see if I can get him. Uh, don't know if he can he can hear me or not. Um, I'll ask him on here. It may or may not work. I don't know. We we shall see. We shall see. Okay, let's start a voice call. No, I'm not hearing anything, so that's not a good start, is it? I can't hear a thing. Uh, let me just set my settings. Voice and video. Uh, output device. There we go. Oh, I can hear. I can hear stuff. Can you hear me now, Andy? Okay, right. Let's see if we can get you on the stream. Say hi to the stream. Hopefully they can hear you. Hello, stream. <laughs> so this is Andy Roberts with Thalamus. He's been uh, doing the maps. Um, how are you doing, Andy? How's it over in Canada? Uh, not too bad. Nice spring day. So, a bit rainy, but, you know, not not unlike the UK at the moment. So. Yeah, we we had hail yesterday, which was uh, unusual. So <laughs> cool. This is the first time I've actually done um, had had another person on on stream with me. Let me knock your volume up a little bit. There we go. Lose. Yeah, I'll, I'll knock the music right down now. I think there we go. Yeah, it's the first time I've actually had anybody on on the stream. So it's kind of interesting. Right. And, um, 
sorry, I was just going to say what I'll do is I'll, I'll largely keep quiet. And then if you have any questions, I can just answer them straight away rather than, you know, you have to type it and then wait 10 seconds for it to appear and then 10 seconds for me to reply. And, yeah, no problem. Okay. <laughs> it looks like chat wants to ask you questions. <laughs> uh, my favorite movie is uh, Star Wars or Back to the Future, I think. Good choices, good choices. Choices. Which Back to the Future? The original? It's got to be the original, right? Oh, it's got to be the original, yeah. Okay, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to save this as a separate project just so that I don't kind of mess up the one we've already got. Um, I'm going to call it Map Tweaking. So the first task I need to do is I need to reduce the character set. So the character set... Um, at the moment, I'm assuming there's a lot of duplicates in there. I can see see lots here anyway. Um, so we need to reduce this down to less than 512 for this to work properly with the system that we've got. I believe it will do that. Um, let's have a look. So I believe there's a button for this, isn't there? Is it compress or state, I think is the one? Remove duplicate characters. Yep. Oh, wow. Yes. Right down. Okay, well, that's a good start. Uh, so the next thing I need to do is I need to remove the tiles because we don't use tiles for this. So hopefully I can just turn that off in here as well. Should keep the map same. If all has gone well. There are only two Star Wars movies, four and five. <laughs> Uh, so the thing is, yeah, I, I was waiting for that actually. It's, Andy said it quicker than I thought it was going to be. Features three when? Did you see the? Uh, I I trolled him with my backgrounds the other day. They keep typing in. They keep typing in creatures three as a background, hoping to get a sneak peek of creatures three, um, because they're convinced for some reason I'm I'm doing it, but um. I, I actually just took a picture of like a pig, a cow and a chicken and just put it on a background and called it Creatures 3. So it was a lot of fun. It made me <laughs> made me very happy when they when they uh when they picked it. They are buffoons, yes. <laughs> I mean one thing yeah. one thing I will say without any kind of prejudice or any kind of um uh, okay, don't need any that. kind of hint, hint, but I was chatting with John Rollins the other day. We had a like a three hour Skype call and I'm going to be chatting with him and Steve hopefully fairly soon. Oh, um, nice. That's all I'll say. That's all I'll say. <laughs> I'll just I'll just throw that out there and everybody can make of that what they wish. Yeah, they'll, they'll run wild with that though now. That's what they will do. The, the rumor mill will be starting there. I mean, the uh, thing is, the, the thing that gets me is Creatures 3 was like years ago. We're on to Creatures 8 at the moment. <laughs> is that is that the one we're finishing off? I've, I've lost track. <laughs> don't, 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 don't. Oh, dear. Don't give them any ammunition. They don't let up. Uh, okay, so I'm just taking out those uh, little circle things that are like on the, you know, on the, uh, the docking kind of station. Uh, because they're sprites, so they don't need to be there. So we're going to get rid of those. Oh, there are these things here. That's going to save us a few characters. Uh, and then there's the doors as well, which obviously we don't need now, because the doors are going to be uh, loaded in dynamically, as as we've seen, so that will save us even more characters uh, from this finding the doors. I'm probably going to miss some, but let's, let's see if I can grab as many of them as I can. What I'll do is once this is once this is working in the game, we'll we'll try and fly through all these areas, um, and just kind of check on everything, make sure everything looks feels right, and that the spaceship can fly through all these places. Uh, there's going to be a lot of things that just don't work straight away. Um, that I'm going to have to change my scripts to get working. Yeah, and I think um, one of the things that when I was streaming this one of the things i did say was um this is sort of the rough structure there is some tweaking to be done in yeah, some sure. of the finer detail but also it might come to i'm 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 best guessing everything when i do this 
So it might come to the point when you when you come to implement a feature on a particular screen, the screen might need to be tweaked. Even yeah, I, I, I fully but... expect that to be be the case in in some places. I think as well that there's there's probably going to be some cases where we might need to add a character or you know add an extra character to this character set somewhere. But I think if we can try and keep this as it is like this and just add to the end, we should be fine. Um, mm. We've got. 40 characters free at the moment if we treat 512 as the limit but um yeah i didn't i didn't add any characters when i um when i sort of trimmed the map i i was working off tiles so i created new tiles to help me draw certain things and keep track of yeah my, my tile set is color coded and stuff like that but well, the tile set is the tile set is going to be really useful for you to do the mapping, obviously. But it's just we don't need it at all in the game because of the way the ma the maps load. Um, yeah. So I'll make a note here. So I can remove next time I send you a map, I can remove those circles, circles and the doors, and the doors. as well. Yeah. I think I've got most yeah. of the doors now. I can't see any more, but um, I'm sure I'll come across one as I fly through the level. Uh, it's actually a lot bigger than you think. This game. Yeah, considering there's only 64 screens or it's 62 quite intricate. screens or something like that. Yeah, and it took a while. Like some of the screens took hours. I honestly spent That's hours it. on some of those screens, and, and other screens took 30 seconds. It's insane. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I can't really... I'm Looking at it, I can't really tell what you've done in some places, so that's a good sign. It's uh, It looks kind of like the original, so... Yeah, and I think the main screens that I beat myself up on quite a bit were the first two or three screens, like that screen there that you've just gone by and the one underneath it, just obsessed over getting the right, yeah. you know, is, is this right, is this proper? And, and then I came up with a rough idea of how I was going to do it, but it would, would have meant changing a lot on all the other screens because obviously it has a ripple effect through the screens if you move doors around and stuff like that. So it was very, yeah, it was sort of tricky. But once I cracked those first few screens and I got into the flow, it was it was easier to sort of finish a screen and move on. But like you say, I can look at that, you know, I can look at the screens now and say, yeah, that actually looks like it, it should. It doesn't seem like a smaller version of the PC version. It seems like its own solid version, which is a good sign because it means that, you know, I've I've made the right choices. Yeah, it doesn't it doesn't feel it doesn't feel different. I don't think you've taken out anything that changes the feel of any screen. I think it looks from what I can tell anyway, it looks like you've only you've just compressed some spaces and you've kinda you know, redu reduced yeah. some kind of corridors down and stuff. It's it looks pretty good. Um I do I'm know sure there are spaces to... there's a couple of spaces on the map which are only one tile wide. And that was by design. That wasn't my choice. The, there are actually spaces in the original version that are only one tile wide. Right. Um, so we, we'll have to sort of cope with that. But there's a couple of screens in there, which um, it's the screen that has four horizontal lasers. Do you remember that screen? It's oh, sort of this in one the here. This yeah. one, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I didn't spend too much time on that one because I thought, well, we might have to come back and redesign that. Yeah, the, I think that one is probably going to have to be cut down slightly. Um, four lasers might be a little bit too much. The The thing is, is that I would expect the lasers to be, because they kind of run almost mirror-like, don't they, where the, the laser on the left, the top left and the top right um, mm -hmm. are mirrors of each other. So... There may be a sneaky way of getting that to work. Um, so I don't know. That's one we'll have to approach when we get to it, I think. it's uh, There's that screen, and there's the one, I believe it's... Uh, I think it might be down here. I think it's this one here, actually. Yeah, this one. Is it this one? With the big circle. I think yeah, that and that is, that is reduced in size a little bit now as well, because I had to redesign some of the actual tiles on that screen because I couldn't I couldn't do the tiles the way that Gareth had done the original uh, layout on the, the PC version. So it is a little bit different, but it's a bit more it's a bit more stylized. But the the 
the pl on the plus side, that area where that spinning wheel goes is a lot smaller now. So, um, so yeah, it, 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 it would, if we're going to do that with sprites still, it would, it's going to need an, a lot less, a lot fewer sprites basically. Yeah. So it might be, might work in our favor, but I'm thinking for that screen with the lasers, we may just have to revert to doing like a, a couple of overhead lasers instead. Um, and redesign the screen in that way because yeah it shouldn't be too not, hard yeah you're not going to lose anything no one's going to we're not going to get letters i mean we might but you know <laughs> it'll be from the usual reprobates but um yeah generally speaking that screen there might be a bit tricky because that has a horizontal and a vertical laser but but yeah they're all bridges that we can cross when we get to them okay i think i've got everything there um I'm pretty sure it's not compressing anymore. Oh, here we go. We hasn't removed any more, so I'm going to just see if I can see the door in here. Just see where that's being used. I can't. I can't. I missed something somewhere. Let's zoom in my make my screen a little bit bigger so I can see. Because there are a few doors. In odd spaces. It I mean, seems to be. It. it seems to be still. I will tell you what I can do. If I zoom out, and if I just make these characters uh, to there, I make them. Let's go with yellow. Uh, and if I do the same on the vertical door as well, which is these here, uh, it's here. there okay do i see any yellow anywhere i don't because oh. it should be compressing and getting rid of those characters because they're not being used now but for some reason it's not doing what you could do is turn all the characters dark gray and then just make the door characters white they would stand out a lot better. Yeah, I'll try that. Because there is a lot of color going on. It is, it is quite tricky to, to see certain things. I mean, I missed a few things here and there when I was doing my editing. But they're definitely not being it. used. So I don't know why they're not being removed. That's weird. Is, it, is there an option to remove ones that aren't on the map? The, oh, maybe I'm. Settings. Ah, yes, I'm pressing the wrong button. That's why. There we go. There we go. Okay, cool. So down to four, 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 which is pretty good. That gives us uh, fifty six, sixty eight extra characters. Should we want to do stuff? And um, we may want to do things like um, actually no, because everything else is dynamic. Everything else will dynamically be loaded in. Okay, so the next thing I need to do is I need to take this character set and I would need to work out the 10 most used uh, characters in this character set um, because what I have, um, I have a base character set. And the base character set has uh, a few of the tiles that get used a lot, and this is to save them having to be duplicated as the screen scrolls in. Uh, basically gives us more space, uh, more, more space for variety on, on some screens. Um, and it also has like the part, some of the particle effects for for the uh, guns, as well as the the font for the the scores and stuff. So I just need to work out what are the ten characters that fit in here, uh, and put them in, into here. They can remain in this character set. That's absolutely fine, um, but they need to be uh, they need to be reordered so that the the actually should it be? Oh, hang on, let me just check what the so this is the map that I had. So you can see here the the first characters that are used here uh, are duplicated to this section here. Um, so that's what I need to do. I need to work out what are the ten most used ones in here. Well, there are uh, there is somewhere in here uh, char usage statistics, uh, and this will output a nice useful file which will tell us exactly how many things are being used. Uh, um, can I just say for the record that that was my idea? <laughs> it's a great, um, great idea. Because <laughs> um, 
I, I actually, or, well, Thalamus, um, we needed a bunch of things added to Charpad uh, for minute 64. Um, so I came up with a massive list of, of stuff for Stuart to do um, and commissioned him to spend a few, you know, a few days or whatever, adding these features in. And a lot of them came from a map editor, a Tyler map editor that I wrote years ago called Fish Ed and stuff like that, like just tile usage, being able to see how many instances of a tile there are on a map is incredibly useful when you're trying to squash stuff down, like in situations like this, and it just helps you automate those really crappy little tasks. Yeah, um, indeed. And in fact, I'd, I'd forgotten that I asked for it because I was going to email him and say, could you put it in? And then I remembered, oh, duh, he's done it already. So. Okay, so um, what I'm just trying I'm... to do now is just rearrange it to get those characters at the beginning. So maybe that's the next thing we need to ask. Can we have the character, you know, when we do this compression, it'd be nice if mm. there was a character sorting by usage. Mm. By usage count. I'm going to write that down. Because that, that would make this job super easy then. Uh, but instead, what I'm having to do is I'm just having to look through here and pick 10 of the most used ones. So starting with the ones that are over a thousand usage, uh, which there are quite a few of, uh, and I'm just going to copy them down to the bottom. So three, five, two. Ones. So that's these ones here. All right, see, now I'm not going to copy those because those live in this section here. And once you get into this section where the rocks are, uh, the screen kind of the diversity of the screen is kind of quite low uh, compared to the other areas. So I don't think that's going to be a problem. So I'm going to leave those ones there uh, and move on to the next most common ones. I mean, a thought occurs here that that bottom section is technically level two. Yeah. Um, and it uses, um, on the whole, it uses very different characters from the rest of the map. So you might even want to consider having two maps. If you want to be really efficient, have two separate maps, depending on what level. You're I don't in. think it's needed, to be honest. The, the, the map load is set up so that we can load um, 512 characters into memory and, and work off that. In fact, they're not the characters aren't even in memory. They're loaded from cartridge banks on the fly. So actually, every screen is like a, a new level anyway in the way that it loads. Um, okay. It's just it builds them dynamically, so... It is like it is very much like a level two though, isn't it? Because you even portal to it as well. So, oh, thank you for the follow, Jester Eve. Thank you very much. Sorry, busy chatting away there. Uh, oh, who who guessed that one? Okay, you have discovered uh, one of the the series that I put in. It's a quite a boring one, but um, it's a series of images. Uh, yeah, and I think uh, I think Eldritch's or Fistmaster has guessed what it is, what the series is about. I'm a bit of a geek like that, so those things end up in there. Okay, so 92. All right, let's find out where I should copy these. So three and four seem to be good locations. So I'm just going to switch this over. My God, how do you do the switch now? Oh, you can't switch in this. I think it's Alt, isn't it? You click on ah, one character with the left yeah. button and then Alt click. Because it used to be just right click, but obviously that's got a different meaning now. Mm. 57 so that's this one like, yeah that makes sense so that gives us it's probably the bulk of the the most used characters actually and the rest are okay i think that's probably enough actually okay so i'm going to save that and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to take a copy of these characters from zero to ten so from here here and I'm going to copy those and then I'm going to have to do this in a slightly frustrating way but um, it should work hopefully paste over right there we go right so now we've got a new set of base characters so that will load those correctly but now i need to uh take this map so i'm going to back up this map uh same project as i'm going to call it original here and then i'm going to save this it's all all a little bit crazy what i'm doing at the moment but okay 
Okay, yeah. So then if I save that project, that's my work in progress up here. Okay, I want to see what happens if I compile now. So if I assemble now, because I think what it will do is it will build, it will build the maps mostly, but I think some of the destructible stuff will be broken, um, because I don't have any of the uh, the character codes for those various things. Okay, yeah. So it's obviously it's put me in a completely different place, and it's put these doors in. So let me just fix that door code. Let's get rid of that for now and let's work out what screen we're on so um so obviously the screen numbers are changing now uh so let me take the map that we're working on which is this one let's figure out where we actually are so it's it's loading into screen six that's where the the code is set up to load or screen seven i believe actually let's just check Uh, no, it's not in that screen game. Yeah, there we go. So it starts us on screen seven. Uh, and I'm assuming this counts from the top. Uh, let's close that window. Actually, can I put a... Uh, Uh, was it 20 by 11 is it no 12. 12 yeah no 40 by 12. 40 uh yeah. oh, you're using, oh, it's uh, using tiles yeah <laughs> so it's 40 by 24 okay all right there we go so it's putting us on screen six, which I'm assuming is going to be one, two, three, four, five. All right, well, it's putting us there, actually, isn't it? That's where it's dropping. Oh, it's screen seven. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, that's a bit easier to see now. Go out any further than that. So how is that working? If does it give me a, a, a map flexi grid coordinate there? No, that's something to add to the list. There you go. <laughs> to, have, to have to have local coordinates within each Two, flexi three, four, map grid. Five, six, seven. Yeah. Okay. So it's it's based entirely on the the positions in this large grid. Um, So we've got seven, eight, nine across. So that means the first one on this row is screen 10. So if we start at screen 10, we should start at the beginning of the game. Four by 24. I think as well, sorry, that, that version of Charpad you have, it also has the pan tool in there, I think. So if you hold space, you should be able to pan around the map. Oh, that would probably be a bit easier. <laughs> yeah, it's easier than finding. Oh wait, the... wait. Well, this is this is my. Oh yeah, yeah. There we go. Yeah, that is a bit easier. Okay, cool. Oh yeah, I I had the pan tool on. Oh, but you, yeah, I see what you mean. You can, you can have it in select mode, or you can just hold down space to. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. That's good. Okay, so hopefully we should start on that screen now, and then it's just a matter of working out what's missing from the various pieces of code that the, the script is going to do. So one of the things the script does is it takes the charpad file itself, uh, rather than having to export from it. Sorry, pardon. Um, and then it will, for every screen, it checks to see if there are any destroyable objects in there, or anything it anything it thinks is a, a, a kind of dynamic interactive object. So that's barrels, the spikes, the, uh, the you know these these power up pods and and such. Now the thing is, is they're they're recognised by a number. Um, which is its character number, and that's no longer going to match. 
Also, that looks wrong up there. Is that correct, or am I? No, that's off. Your, your corner pieces are off for some reason. Yeah, something has gone weird there, hasn't it? That's probably to do with the the base characters, which ah, the base characters are one thing I do need to export, so I can't just leave those. They have to be exported. So I'll save that project. So it's only the main file that gets that gets um automatically passed by the scripts. Uh doesn't seem right. One thing I will say too, from going through that map, um, I see a few comments online about this game, and when when certain people see it, they go, "Oh, it's just a Checonoid, or it's just a Cybernoid ripoff, or something like that." This game is is for anyone who hasn't played it. It's very actually very different to Cybernoid. The emphasis is very very different. There's a couple of screens which are very much, yeah, like a Cybernoid screen, very very similar, but. They're very, very different games, I found. Still hasn't worked, has it? Hmm. Okay, yeah, so it, it's messing around with the, the base characters hasn't worked for some reason. Let me figure out where they're loaded in. This is what I expected to happen for certain things to just kind of... Because there's been quite a lot of code um, put in place to kind of work around, try to get these maps to load in on the fly from the cartridge. And obviously it's not it's not doing exactly what I want it to do in some cases. Uh, I think one thing you could do that would help this process in future is if you send me your base characters project. Um, yeah. And then when when I do the when I put the map together for you again, I can copy, I can go through and find out the ten most used characters and you know, do all that kind of stuff for you. All right, yep. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, just trying to figure out because it looks like it's not actually because that file seems to have written properly. Um, it's still it's got today's date on it, but it doesn't seem like it's loaded in in quite the way I thought it was going to load in. Um, I've got to remember how it loads in though. Now this is the other problem as well. I've been doing this on and off so long, trying to remember how. A lot of this works is is half of the battle. Uh, it's export. No, it's not that because that's the one that's actually built by the game. Let's have a look at the game the way the game loads. Okay, so it loads. It does load base chars? Okay. Okay, that should be right. I'm not sure why that's not. Let's take a quick look at the... Oh, maybe it's the map data is reading in wrong. Hang on. So what we should be getting is this screen here. And instead what we're getting is... Yes, it looks like the bottom is fine, but then some of the most common characters seem to be off. Uh, the base of this... So the corner pieces, as you say. Should be these here. Um, I don't think I need to set a tile set at all. This was just me testing. Is that the file that you pasted into? This one here, yeah. Let me just check okay. that again. So I might have made a mistake here. Maybe I've not got the right. No, I haven't got the right characters. Look, it's wrong. Yeah, I've got the wrong characters. Okay, that's fine. That's the problem then. So I copy the 10 here. Because I can't, the, one of the things I can't paste. Oh yeah, I can paste directly in there. Ah, okay. Well, that's different. Never used to be able to do that. I keep discovering things about this. I really like it. Right, there we go. That's that's going to fix that problem, I think. Yeah, there was a bug where you couldn't 
copy from one instance of Charpad to another, but he did he did fix that in the pro version. Yeah, I, I think I got so used to using it in the old uh, system, I was just um, I, I was just kind of got used to close it, saving a project, closing it down, opening the next project, and pasting it. So I had to keep using the same instance. I've got so used to doing that, I for, forgot to even try it again. Yeah, there we go. It's fine now. Cool. So obviously we don't have any of these things exploding, and that's going to be to do with the script that um, I pass here. Um, oh, look at that. That was really useful of me. Brilliant. Um, so I had already set it up to actually use uh, numbers for these things. So I'm hoping that, yeah, so it's the top left corner, basically, of these objects. So 170 is going to be this one here. Yeah, okay. And I don't know why I've colored them. Um, I'm going to try and I'm going to do it without the coloring first. That might just be to help me uh, when I was looking at the map. I don't think it's important. The one thing I do know is important is the materials, uh, which define how things explode. So basically, each material number here says um, in which direction particles are going to fly off from this object when it when it explodes. Um, so this one, three, four, five creates a kind of ring of particles, basically. And so you can see it here on on this one as well. It's also got one, three, four, five on the corners. But then two, seven, six, eight in the middle bit, so it explodes differently. Uh, and that's how I'm doing those those explosions, uh, and that's just translated as part of the um, script here. So let's try. I'm just going to put that up there, so it's off screen. I'm going to bring this one in again. That one. I'm just going to see if I can figure this out. Okay, so spike is at seventeen now. Let's change that to 17. The barrel. Where's the barrel? There's the barrel. I think that's it, isn't it? Yeah, that's it. So it's at 35. Okay, bonus pod is again top left corner of that bonus pod, which is about there, which is 72. I'm oh, so glad I did it with these constants. <laughs> Makes it a lot easier. Um, but do they all have to be in a row then? So do, do all the pod, the bonus pod graphics have to be in one continuous strip? Uh, no, I don't think so. I think what it's doing is it's recognizing, um, it's recognizing where the top corner is and then it's not looking at what where the characters are in the character set, but where the characters are placed on the screen. So what you could actually do is is you could have any any old crap in in here, um, like this, and that would still explode like a barrel because the top corner is a barrel. Okay. Um, I believe that's how it works. I, I will double check. I think it yeah it must be because if you look in here, you can see the the bonus pod is the top is here and then the bottom is separate same with the, the spikes as well um it's, it's based entirely off the position in the map rather than the character set okay way <laughs> too clever and efficient for me <laughs> i did I, I thought about it for a long time before i i came up with the what i felt was a good enough solution for it it was uh it was kind of confusing at first uh figuring out how to actually make this work properly Okay, four spike mine is two four two. I like that chat have discovered that the the noble gases are in my backgrounds, so they're now trying to name all the noble gases. <laughs> uh, see, <that? laughs> keeps them occupied, keeps them out of trouble. So but I am going to be interested to see. Sorry. No, go on. I was just going to say, I will be interested to see what it looks like, you know, just you wandering around the map. Because when, when you're in an editor, it's very, it's just very, you know, soulless and, and you know, it's just graphics. It's just, you know, characters and, and stuff. But once you've got a sprite and you're in control of it and you're moving around, it takes on a different 
feel. It's one of those sort of, one of those moments where the game really feels like it's starting to come together. Yeah, it was like that. Once I got the um, got the mines in place and you could actually kind of explode the mines, it started feeling very much like, you know, even though there's loads left to do on it, it, it's, it feels like, um, it feels like there's there's a game there now. Uh, it's going to hopefully feel even more like that now with the uh, with these in place. Oh, that's the other series as well. That's the uh, uh, the CP, well, the, the the chip series as well. So there's a few of those in there. Um, good luck guessing all of those. I am going to add um, a, a new kind of thing to the background so that when you pick a background um that belongs to a series like that it will tell you that it's from a series and it will tell you how many are in that series as well so it'll give you give you an idea that there's more similar ones to guess rather than me having to tell you all the time again to keep you all occupied okay so that's not blowing up so that's something not quite right there and neither of those let's try the mines Okay, obviously the laser needs moving over to this screen. So this is screen they, 11. They don't, have, um, they don't have materials attached, do they? Is that why? Oh, maybe. Yes, maybe. Maybe. Or maybe it is the colors. Maybe they do need the colors as well. Well, they shouldn't be because those don't have colors and those don't have colors as well. Oh, I've just noticed you made the six spike mine smaller. No, you haven't. It's there. Okay. Oh, there's a different mine type here. Okay. Yeah, two different ones. Okay, I might have to. I have to take a look at that. I think one of these is probably going to be a sprite because I think one of them moves around on some of the screens, if I remember rightly. Um, I believe it's the big, big one. Um, yeah, moves around, and then there's two smaller, um, there's two smaller types. One with four little spikes, and then one that's just a round ball. So the one that you can see in the bottom right corner there, that big one. Um, oh, this one here. Um, at the bottom right of the map, yeah, that one occasionally moves. So sometimes yeah, it's a sprite, sometimes that. it's static. But lower down on that screen, um. There's some round mines. Oh yeah, so I had a yeah, so I definitely had one in in here. Uh, it's in a different place actually, but uh, but it's the same screen. But you can see I I have one of those mines there. But I just turn the materials off. So I have a three by three, which I think is what you've got here actually. Three, yeah, yeah, three by three. So that that matches, which actually means I've probably got one of these. Of these wrong six spike mine 250 let me just check what that is in my because i don't think it's that anymore it's 262 originally yeah which was this one okay so that is different that is um is it that one? Oh wait no it's a completely different size on this Ah, okay. Yeah, so this one we might have to shuffle and make it um a three by three block. Uh just for simplicity's sake. Because otherwise we've got lots of kind of overhangs here. That may have been something that you or we can make it a sprite. Um, I can move it. I think probably what happened is you, I centered it within a tile, and then you centered it within. Yeah, I think, it, I think it needs just, just shifting so that it fits within a three by three block would be fine. I think. Okay. So if you center, center that cross in the middle of a character, I guess, and then it will fit neatly in a three by three space. So I'll leave that one for now. I won't. I won't touch that one. Um, so I'll put that back to 250. I think it's probably wrong, but let's let's leave it on that. Let's put some materials on that first screen, and then we'll move the laser over to the to the new system as well. 
Oh, someone discovered the uh, CIA chips. Okay, so I'm going to put materials uh, on, on these down here. So I can do that through just through here. I don't need to. Okay, so where was the barrel again? 35. Why can't I see that on the map? Oh, because I'm in the wrong half. That's why. There we go. And what was the materials? was one three four five so one three is that the bottom yeah it is four five all right we save that i'm going to give this another try Let's see what happens This is the thing now, it's remembering exactly what I did to get these maps to import. Okay, so hopefully these will now explode, which they are not doing. Okay, so we're on screen, uh, I forgot screen it was now, 10, I believe. Yeah, 10, all right. So let me go into our asset export. There should be a persist folder, which there is, and a screen 10. Okay, so it does recognize that there is a barrel. It thinks it's an X or Y, what's that, 21. So if we treat this in this area here, okay, so we need to, we need to work out, yeah. So having the local coordinates in here would be good. It'd be good if there was like, um, local coordinates and also your uh, current flexi grid coordinate as well so this is 444 so if this is 24 yeah that's that's correct in terms of screen space because that makes this position 20 and the screen has got about a uh, hood which is one high which means 21 is correct so yeah this should this should be um this should be correcting the ah i know why it's not working okay so what we do need to do now is now we have um all the screens in place what we need to start dealing with is um the actual screen controller like the, the load controller so what that is, it's um, we have in here. That's the loader itself. No, it's not that one. It's this one. We have a list of all the screens and the the custom code that goes with those. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and work out where these new screens actually are. So that's going to be ten. That would be eleven. That would be twelve. Um, I believe this is like. So hang on, let me look at the original map. Remember how wide the original map was. Yeah, so this was screen 13, 14, 15, right? 13, 14, 15. So it's plus 10 onto these. So this would actually now be 17, 18, 19. So these pieces of code are, are, are where the screen's um, unique code lives. So I just need to, that's going to stay the same. Screen zero. This is our, this is our default no behavior. Which just is like the default thing we sell for each screen. Um, so I need to rename these files in here now to match that. So first of all, I'm going to put that on this screen so I can see it. 
and I'm going to go through and rename these. So actually, I'm going to do it in the, in the folder. It's going to be a bit easier if I do it in there, I think. So screen one stays the same. Screen, I don't know, I keep opening them. So this becomes screen 10. Twelve, seventeen, eighteen, and nineteen. Okay. So the one of the jobs that these these screen files do is they load any of the persistence data on the screen, and the persistence data is also what tells uh, <clears throat> tells the engine how many hit points things have. Um, so that if you leave the screen and come back in again, you, you know, you can shoot a barrel once, leave the screen, come back and shoot once more and it will explode. You don't have to shoot it from the start again. It doesn't reset its hit points. Um, so one of the things these files do is they, they set that up. They load these persistence uh, files here as well. Uh, so what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to set these values to match and then I'm going to have to set these values to match as well. Just make sure that that is correct yeah and if i look in here that's those files okay so that would be enough for that screen to work but i need to get all the other ones that we have screen files for so 11 and i also need to change them in here as well and then i think that's it i think that will be enough for the the map to actually play through uh obviously we don't have any bonuses um in place um, other than the ones we've already set up. So that's probably another task to do is to work out what bonuses go in what, what um, capsules. Uh, so we can go and add those into the uh, into the levels as well. So 10, 11 has no persistence, that's fine. Um, oops, 12 also has no persistence, let's call it 12 though. Seventeen does have persistence. Okay. So these persist files are auto generated by the the Charpad script, um, which is why I'm not changing the numbers in the persist folder up here. It's part of the export, so I don't I don't need to change any of that. But I do need to change these to match. And that means in here. Okay, so now we need to work out how many screens we've actually got and make sure they point to the right places. So by default, we have a screen zero, which actually does nothing. This is just an empty file. This just makes sure that the um, the screen has an in it an update and an exit function. Even if they do nothing, they just return straight away. So by default, most screens will be zero. Uh, but we do need to go through and add in um, the right values for, for the screens that do use them. So I'm going to reset these all back to zero again, except for the one up there, because I know that's a correct one. And we're going to make sure that we've got the right number of screens in here as well, because at the moment we just have the right number of screens for the original map. Um, actually, I can just look in here. Can I? Okay, so now we've got about 90, 99 screens, wow. but a lot of these will be blank. A lot of these will have nothing in them at all. Um, you know, they'll be like this. It's, it's not even a screen. It's just, it's just there, but it has to be, it has to be labeled for it to, for this to work properly. Three, four, four, eight, there we go. Okay, so I can actually just, Copy this as a block like that. Let's get rid of all of these. So it's 10, 20, 30. And all this is is just a lookup table to say, I've loaded this screen, which which is the code that um which is the the, the reference for the code that runs this screen. Now I'm hoping my 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 aim is to try and get all this code to fit into memory, um, and only have the assets loaded in from the cartridge. 
however the, i i'm leaving room to be able to to load in from cartridge this is um I, uh, ideally, I don't want to if I can help it. But one of the things you were saying about actually, uh, Andy, you were saying about the uh, the level two thing. This is a perfect example of where I might actually use that um, to to load the code in for level two once you've completed level one. Can you actually go back to level one once you get to level two, or is it is that it? You is it a point of no return? Yeah, that's it. I mean, it's 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 like the original cybernoid it's just it's continuous so you're on that level and you know you either finish the game at that point or you die okay so so yeah i could quite easily load this the code for the second half of the um for the second half of the 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 game in a later date so that's that's good that saves that saves a bit of memory should we need it i don't think we will though i have a funny feeling this will fit um because the code that we're adding is quite small and I'm trying to I'm trying to make reusable code wherever I can. Um so things like the laser and the doors and stuff, this is why that those I wrote those ahead of time so that this code is reusable. Right, I think that should be it now. Hopefully if nothing breaks here, this should just load. Oh no, okay, we've got a failure up here. Oh, because I didn't change these numbers. All right. So turn. 11, 12, 17, 18, and 19. Oh, this is still getting chips. What's that one? 6569. Six, okay, cool. Uh, yeah, they're mostly Commodore chips, um, C64 chips. I did do some. Um, I did do some other ones, but not very many. They're mostly C64 chips, but there's quite a lot of varieties of C64 chips. So. Okay, fingers crossed. I think we might be able to fly through the level in a minute if this has worked. I saw a flash, so something happened. Ah, okay, so in Persist 18 does not exist anymore. Which indeed it doesn't, yeah, okay. So what is screen 18? Let's go and have a look. Maybe I've added something that I shouldn't have added. Let's just take a look on here. Okay, so. Uh, I'm missing missing loads of people leaving as well in chat. Uh, good night, those who've left. I know I know you've already gone now. <laughs> okay, so one. Oh, that's too fast. Oh, wait a minute. It can't be screen 18. What am I what am I thinking? This is 10 onto this. So this is actually 21, 22, and 23, which does have persist. Yes. Oh, damn it. All right. Yeah, I think it was probably the right. I think if I'd have done any more on this um, and added like more systems to this, it would have got very confusing trying to drop this map in. So I think this was probably the right time to do yeah. it. It was one of those tasks that you just need a really good run at it just to break its back. And then once you get over that hump, the rest is plain sailing. So I think the first half took easily about 10 hours. And then the second half was maybe two hours just finishing the rest of the map. Yeah, I suppose you just you need to get into the flow of it, don't you? You need to kind of work out how how your your kind of workflow is working. So, um. <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot SP. You have you have two hundred and thirty one of them of the backgrounds listed. Wow. Okay. I need to I need to add a lot more soon. You're, you're getting through them pretty quickly, actually. My chat has just turned into basically background and gambling spam now I, i've given up on trying to trying to <laughs> keep it tidy but it, it keeps them chatting it's, it's good like i said it keeps them out of trouble all right fingers crossed fingers crossed oh something happened can't open file persist 18 where's it oh because i've changed those okay 21 
third time's a charm. What about your screen vectors too? Did they need to change? <sighs> yep, you're right. Thank you. <laughs> I'm I'm going to give you points, even though yeah, even though you're uh, live, as it were. I'm going to give you points because I know it will it will annoy those who should have got the uh, points themselves. So let me just, there we go. I'm going to give you ten as well, just to annoy Andy. <laughs> <laughs> it's favoritism. There we go. This one's paying attention. <laughs> uh two five one seven one five zero one. Or is that, is that the PLA? No, it's not the PLA chip, is it? What is that? The more the merrier. Okay, let's, let's please work this time. Yeah, that was it. That was the last one. Oh, it is the PLA chip. All right. Oh, I'm thinking of I'm thinking of Charom and Basic. They've got like nine one something or other, aren't they? But yeah, it is the PLA chip. Okay, cool. I did. That's one I didn't list actually. So I'll, I'll make a note of that. Is there a Python background? There is, but it's because it, um, it's tabbed all the way off to the side, so you can't see it. It's just white space. Okay, that's not exploding. But those are. That's good. Okay. So it looks like the bonus pod is not exploding for some reason. But let's just check as we move around. The laser is working again. Okay, that sprite needs nudging up ever so slightly. Let's do that now because this screen is pretty much done if you if you count that sprite. Uh close tabs to the right. Okay, so this is screen eleven. And we have passable area and a sprite here, which I think just needs nudging up like maybe to the left as uh, to the right as well. I'll move it right. One and up two, I think. Um, point in question about that screen two. One of the things I didn't do, um, because I thought I'll do it this way, and then Simon will say, "Oh no, we'll just do it this way." Um, is that little secret tunnel at the top of that screen? Like, yeah. how are we? How are you doing that sort of thing? Are you masking that with sprites or something? Yeah, so it's um, the the character is uh, is has to be drawn in front of everything. If you if you try and draw it behind things, you would still see it through these black gaps here anyway. Uh, so what the what it does is uh, when you enter this screen, we have these two macros here called passable areas, and what they do is they define a, a rectangle of characters that you can that you can walk through that you can go through, um, and then what it does is it draws a, a black sprite underneath the the map in that location um so, so it actually does draw behind but we draw a black sprite on top of the character and then as i move up and down the black sprite matches my up and down movement and if i move left and right it matches my movement so there's a black sprite here at the moment following me as i move along and then follow me as i go up there which means as i move in there it, it masks me as i go in and that allows me to create these maskable areas on any anywhere on the map oh that that doesn't quite match actually okay so i need to i need to change the masculine area slightly and, and nudge it um yeah yours may have been a little bit different let me just check um, that on on here there's like there's just a slight difference in the gap so your gap starts six across and i think mine probably starts at four which is probably the reason why it's doing that yeah mine starts at four okay so uh, I cannot remember what the it looks like X Y width and height, but I, I'm not entirely sure. So I'm just going to go and check that. And again, when you do code that's months old, it's sometimes hard to remember these things. Charpos X and Y width and height. Yeah. Okay. So if I keep the if I change that X pos to that and then reduce the width. 
No, that width needs to stay the same, but this one needs to be reduced. There we go. That should be fine now. And cool, the bub thing works. Uh, sorry, zub thing works because it's the screen numbers have been changed correctly. So that's a good sign. I need to get the bonus pods working, but uh, come back to that soon. Those sprites look good. Yeah, I don't know why that's not exploding. It's a shame because that one's got a speed up in it. Which I could do with right now. Yeah, so the mask is still working. They're going to go all the way to the end. Yeah, that's okay. Cool. They're not working on this screen either, though. What are these barrels working? Yeah, they're working. Good. Okay, let me just check the code for this screen. No, not this screen. Actually, yeah, let's do, let's do this top one. It's probably... Because that's got three of these in. So let's check screen one assist. Okay, it does point to there being bonus pods there. Uh, but again, this might be because they don't have the um, the materials on. So let me add the materials to those things. So those materials for this should be the same as this one, which is 1273. That's really a big combination of numbers, but whatever. One, two, Because I think it also uses these to say, oh, this thing has hit points. If you hit it and it's got a material, it says, ah, oh, this thing has got hit points. And then what it does is it uses the number, it uses this material number to work out where it is on the on the object so that it can reduce the hit points of all the pieces in this object at the same time. So these bonus pods have 10 hit points, right? So if you hit it on, say, where the material 7 is, it goes, okay, I know where I am because the material is seven. So it knows that there are two this way, one this way, and one row down. Um, and then it goes and changes. So this was already been changed to nine, and it goes and changes all of these to nine hit points. Uh, so that's why it isn't blown up, because it, it, it does need the materials in order for it to know how to propagate that hit point change throughout the object. Uh, what was the one, two, four, six, eight, five, of course it is. So I was very pleased with myself when I came up with this method. <laughs> it seems to work quite it's, well. It's really ingenious. Like you, you don't waste your Thursday evenings. I'll say that. <laughs> there's, there's so much, so much in there already. Because um, I was trying to work out with that, with that thing where you go behind the background. I was trying to work out well what would be the best way to do that. Should I create a set of pass through tiles, characters that are different from all the other tiles. And I thought, no, I, Simon's probably got some ingenious way of doing that. <laughs> and then lo and behold, that's a really slick system. I think there's only, there's probably only two other places in the game um, where you can go behind stuff. So there's um, one area that I haven't, um, I haven't even thought about yet, uh, which I know is going to be um, a problem because I'm going to have to update the mask and system. I'm going to go to it now. Um, is it, I think it's this way. I need to fix that as well. Oh, oh, okay. Okay. Exploding mines is, is not good. Okay. I don't know why that is, but there's a place where there's a, there's like a very thin column that you can go behind. Um, so I, I, in that case, the mask is going to have to be resized. So it's going to be another sprite for that. Uh, yeah, actually, you know what? There are some other areas. There's a couple of areas, a couple of screens where you can go. Yeah, so there is the columns, and then there's one other screen, I think, where you can go. There's a hidden passage in the middle of a bigger column. But... Yeah, I remember there's, uh, what is it? It's this one. Oh, well, the cycles can't increase. Is it going to stay low? That is the music uh, steps that's 
that's uh, there. The only reason I put that in is just I wanted to keep an eye on um, how much the music was using. I might actually take a look at the music routine and see if there's any way I can optimize it because it is kind of heavy. Um, but I, I'm only going to do that if I absolutely have to, if I'm going to try and work around it. Because if I work around it, that means I'm optimizing my code rather than having to optimize anything else. So uh, just as a last resort, though, I will go in and, and try and optimize it a little bit. I'm sure there's lots of little tricks you can do. What is that game? I recognize that. Is it draw not Drive Club? That OK, no, I don't recognize it. Fair enough. OK, let's let's before I sort the mind out, let's see if we can get the um, the bonus pods exploding and then we'll figure out what's going on with the mines. Uh, I, I think it's possibly to do with the, um, the the character value that's been used. I'm not entirely sure. I need to need to take a look at what's going on there. I'm out of cider. I'm on to just the vodka. Really not enjoying the vodka, if I'm honest. I think I put a bit too much in. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so so the bonus pods are working. So one of the things the bonus pods have, um, which we're going to have to do is um, on the screens that have them, uh, which this is one of them, we have to register the pods on the screen. So every screen that has a bonus pod has this register function in it, uh, which just registers what's in, where the pod is, uh, and what's in it, basically. Because I think it's consistent, isn't it? Through, there, there's no randomness to these. They're, they're very specific things in... Uh, change the characters yeah. to Shrelik really, like, if you use Mixed Team with Vodka. I put a sprig of rosemary in it to try and to try and make it taste of something, but it just tastes of vodka. I think I overdid it. Um, so yeah, I think I should be able to get some things from these. The other thing I need to do is, oh, okay. That was the, oh, 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 okay. Something weird's going on here. Cause those are not give me the right bonuses for some reason. In fact, it gave me nothing. Uh, ah, I know why that's because as I say, we're pointing to the exact location of the power up. So what happens is when you when you shoot the power up, it uses those materials and says, OK, here's the here's the power up uh, thing that you've exploded. The top left corner is the one that has material one. So when it finds that material one, it says, OK, this is the coordinates of this bonus pod. And then it goes and has a look against its registered pods to see which one it is and then gives you that power up. So what's happening is because these have been shifted slightly, they're not matching up um, and I'm pretty sure we'll be able to see exactly why on here. Um, they're probably just out by like one or two characters to the left or right. Um, yeah, it looks like they're two characters over. So if I just nudge these back by two, uh, hopefully vertically they're the same though, but they should be there on the floor. So. I'm surprised I remember all of this, to be honest. <laughs> Christmas, Christmas backgrounds, my God. Completely the wrong side of summer for those. No, it's still showing the wrong thing. I think I might have got my calculation wrong there. Because I'm pretty sure that's that's the issue. I just need to get these values right. Uh, okay, let's work it out. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay. Wait. Wait, that is... Zero, one, two, 
I took two off these and that it was not showing me them, but it seems like this was correct all along. Huh. Confused now. Oh, what is that ugly background? You burn it, burn it. I think the I think the Atari ST had its uses though, didn't it? Like if you had a door that needed to be kept open, <laughs> it's quite heavy. I used the Spectrum for that. It had rubber keys. You could put it face down on the floor. It was really good. It was very grippy. Oh yeah. The grippage. <laughs> hmm, I'm not sure why that's not lined up properly. That's that's kind of weird. Um, which makes me think this is not doing exactly what I think it's doing. Uh, I've definitely got those right because that one that one explodes. That one's fine. Um, but this one for some reason doesn't want to. Explode. Let me just check the position. Okay, so it's at position 20 down the screen. So that's 21 because of the, the hood is at the top. Uh, and then horizontally, this is at 54, minus 40 from this one. So it's 14, 14, 21. Okay. Oh, I was, you know, I put it the wrong way. I subtracted two instead of adding two. maths fail built in midi though yeah that i must admit actually the the atari st did have some really good um really good music programs for it um but as a games machine it was terrible <laughs> i think that's the the standard defense isn't it for the atari st it's like well it had a built-in midi port it's like, well, <laughs> yeah, but that's just it's like twenty p's worth of components, and the Amiga had MIDI interfaces that you could buy for it. So you know, Daytel had a MIDI interface, but had the Amiga had MIDI, and what 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 would the ST have had? Uh, Jack Tramiel, that's about it, really. <laughs> Answers on a postcard, yeah. You're all wrong, Master. <laughs> oh, poor, poor Andy, he likes his likes his ST. I think this will work now. There we go. So I did take the um oh that's not working either that for some reason the collision is not working on that. Okay, I need to look into that. I took the trail off this mace because it was causing so many problems with the multiplexer. Um I thought it wasn't hugely important to the to the look of the game. I will put it back if I can get it back. Oh Gonna crash. All right. Okay, so I'm gonna go just straight down to that screen now and see if it crashes again. Because I know I had some issues going from the laser screen to the next screen, so that's something I do need to look at. I'm gonna grab this speed up though. Okay, yeah, as soon as they explode, they kind of destroy half of the screen for some reason. Um. <laughs> okay, I mean, that that's interesting. <laughs> but this could be due, ah, this could be due to the, um, the materials as well, because it's, it, it's exploding. Part of the explosion means it needs to know where all the pieces are of the mine. So it's looking around to see if it can find. Oh no, it's the materials are all there, so that should be should be fine. The different uh, objects, though. They're they're the mines with the 
little spiky bits on the corners. Oh, wait, this is my old, is this my old map? Yeah, this is my old map. Okay, I need to close that one down now because that's just confusing me. So, yeah, okay, I didn't have, okay, so let's go and put those in. So this one I'm going to leave. I'm not going to do anything with that, although it might explode when I go near it. So I need to make sure that that doesn't happen. Um until we change that because i don't know if you saw on the on the uh the map i just closed i did have that same thing but centered on a on a tile mm -hmm. so it's an unusual case where it's like a three by three tile just for that that thing um, which is another reason i'm not using the, the tile system at all so let's have a look we've got i think that is the top of the mine there um check that actually in here two five four yes so let's make this the same let's do one, three, yeah, it's all the updates on the screen, which is nice. Four, five, um, so to do the spikes as well, that is here. It's also one, three, four, five. The other nice thing about this as well is, as I was saying the other day, I, I do intend on kind of extending my cartloader framework to work with Mega 65 files. Uh, and the way this system is set up, it means that things like explosions can be enhanced just by changing the explosion that happens for a one to, to put out 20 times more particles. Um, so it would be quite a simple task to just have some kind of assembly time switches, which uh, increased particle counts and sprite counts and things for yeah. other platforms. So 242, this is a four spike mine. 242, yes, okay. So one, three, four, five. Okay, so the cool. other, sorry, go on. I was just going to say what you could do is when you finish with this file, if you send it back to me, um, then I've got a reference for when I export the map again. I can put all these materials in for you. Yep. Yeah, okay. That's not a bad idea at all. I'll send you this and I'll send you the uh, the base file as well. I've actually got a, another one, which is, um, let me open that. So I've got this one, which is like the, has the base characters in. So all, all it is, is it's the first 10 characters from this file. Uh, and then I've just ordered this file so that these first 10 characters are the most common characters that are being used. Um, and then everything else at the bottom end here. So this is all just blank. This is what gets filled in with these dynamically. Then this is like the, the font for everything else. Uh, but then I've also got um, this file as well, which contains all the bullets in various directions. Uh, so this is, you know, up, down, left and right um and die sorry up up sorry left and right up and down uh diagonal kind of northwest and southeast or south sorry southwest and northeast uh, and then the opposite diagonal and then the same for all the other different weapons so you can see how they work now this triple shot i realize is different uh to this i just put it in like this as a placeholder i realized that it actually spreads out so uh, but everything else is the weapons but you shouldn't need that one i sh wouldn't think um but i'll give you i'll send you the base charles one because that will be useful okay, okay so let's try this now hopefully now we can fly through this level a little bit oh ha 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 tardis outside <laughs> Somebody complained when I put the uh, the TARDIS. So I, I put like one of the very new TARDIS uh, pictures on because I know nothing about Doctor Who. To me, that's to me that is what I know of the TARDIS. So I thought I'd be smart and put the inside of a TARDIS because it was. I thought it was going to be like all right, and everyone went, eh, "I don't like the new one. I don't want the old one." So there you go. You got the old one there. Dot on the inside. things you have to do yeah if they're like children 
I is think that... it's called the Millennium TARDIS, isn't it? It's the Millennium TARDIS. And that's what Gandalf flies around space in with Captain Spock. And that's it. That's <laughs> <laughs> You can feel the blood pressure rising as we speak. It reminds me of a is it Big Bang Theory where Sheldon will get really angry when people mix up Star Trek and and um, all that needs changing as well. Star Trek and Star Wars. Doctor Who fans are intolerable. Typed while wearing a Doctor Who t-shirt. <laughs> okay, this this seems to be working. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's going to crash when I go near this mine up here. Uh, but I should be able to destroy things. I do need to fix the bonus on this screen. It was the wrong bonus. But I can shoot the mines from a distance, which is good. Um, shoot those. I think this mine is... Oh, no, it's just blocking me. Oh, because it doesn't know it's a mine. It, it's, it's confused as to what it is, because I haven't I haven't marked it properly in the in this thing. So this here is the one that needs to be to be changed. At the moment, it's pointed 250. So there's going to be a random piece of scenery which just explodes on me which is uh so look what it's going to be i know it is a mine oh it's an it's a it's a smaller six ah right there is a six spike and there's an eight spike mine okay oh no it's an eight spike mine. where are those mines then okay well that's another mine i need to implement that should be pretty easy though the code is already there for that Okay, let's fix that bonus down here, and then we'll start working our way through the level. Um, obviously, any bonuses I pick up on the way after this one um, are not going to be registered, so they're, they're definitely not going to show me anything. But this one should... I, I already know what's in this one, so it'll be good to get it in properly. Pardon me. And so okay. you don't have you don't have collision in yet. Do you? You're just collision you with what? The background, the yeah. Walls. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Collisions oh. in. Collisions in, and you can, you know, you can see that when you shoot things as well. So, does the does the park effect on it? I do need to fix it so it doesn't do this, uh, where the the animation kind of gets stuck repeated when you just shoot the wall. But um, yeah, but yeah, I can. Walls, the walls do block you. That's what happens here. This thing is blocking me now. So, how do you know which tiles can block you? I suppose every every character blocks you. Doesn't everything, it, yeah, it's... everything blocks you unless it's unless it's clear like this. So, it's just quite nice. It makes it quite kind of simple. It means everything other than character zero in the in the set blocks you. But what I'm actually doing is everything. Um, so let's load up the base set again. So everything below this point here, so all of these characters here, other than zero, is solid. So if it's in this list, if it gets dynamically added to this list here, it's solid, with the exception of zero. Everything from this point onwards is, you can pass through it. So that means bullets you can pass through, which you obviously you want to do. You don't want things, yeah, you, know, you know, you don't want to get stopped by a mine shard or something like that. It should go through you, but it should hurt. Um, and the things that you pick up, like the little flashy diamonds that you can pick up, the hundreds and stuff, as well as particles as well. So all these big dots down here, these this is the particle engine. Uh, so these characters are, are changed on the fly into into particles all over the place. So. <laughs> hey, Rusty Games. What have you been up to? Why don't we see more of you on here anyway? Oh, I know you are. You're fine. He's fine. Oh, my God. That vodka is horrible. Uh, hey, old school coder as well. I can see you sneak in there. How's it going? Ah, so it's all right. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I'm the hardly a celebrity. I got my Game Boy game out now. I got a game for this, and the publisher sent me a uh, a Game Boy Color uh, with my game on it. 
built in, which is pretty cool. And you can win one now as well. It's kind of cool. You made a Game, game Boy emulator over Christmas with a Game Boy Color or... Um, or uh, oh, no, no. Uh, just the, the original DMG. No, not color. Not interested. No, it's got to be a color one like this. Right, let's figure out where this bonus pod is. So this is uh, 72 across us, uh, 32 on screen 21. I just love the fact that he wrote a Game Boy emulator over Christmas from scratch, from nothing. <laughs> it's and, a good... and you're like, is it Game Boy Color? Oh, yeah. I'm interested in <laughs> <laughs> he's a good coder he's a good coder i used to work with him um quite a while ago now actually uh, god how long has it been now it must be like eight years or so i think since since i last worked with him maybe more actually i'm not sure yeah about eight years i think What made you yeah, do a I, Game I, Boy emulator then, out of interest? Sorry, go on, Andy. I say I I used to work with a programmer um, called Snake, and he he wrote a few things on the sixty four. I think he did Rodland on the sixty four, and he did good game. I like that. He may have done Swiv as well, um, which is pretty good. Um, but he was just obscenely clever, like unbelievably clever, and he could write, he could sit down and write a spectrum emulator from scratch um, with no documentation or anything like that. He, he knew the spectrum so well. Um, I think he wrote a spectrum emulator called Clive with a K. And he also wrote a, a Mega Drive emulator. Just, I don't know how people do that. I don't know how you write an emulator, let alone. Oh, it's crashed. Yeah, not me. <laughs> I've never tried it. It's something I've never tried. I should probably try make a Commodore one at some point. I should maybe be able to do it. But I, I, the thing is, is, it's making an emulator and then it's making a hundred percent cycle accurate emulator. That's that's where it gets uh, that's where it gets crazy. I think. Um, if I was to write an emulator, I'd, I'd honestly go for um, I'd honestly go for Mega sixty five. Mm. Get more emulators in, in there. Get some competition on the go. Okay, so there is definitely a crash issue with this laser. I need to figure out what that is. It's probably to do with the sprite clearing. Um, but let's try and work through the level a little bit then. So um, you would normally go down here, uh, do your Llamatron thing. This would be a door you have to open here. Uh, I've disabled the door for now. You wouldn't go through there because it's not open yet. Um, so that's another thing I need to do actually at some point is this this beam between there. Um, there's a bug there as well. When I enter this screen, uh, for some reason it triggers these down here. I think it's to do with the way it scrolls over. Okay, so this the border color change there is because I've been hit by uh, hit by uh, a mine. So. It's, it's basically showing me that the, the death routine will, will eventually work, but it's just not wired up yet. But so far, this is looking all right. Um, so these turrets here, these um, these have like a little sprite that moves around them, right? So that will have to be added. Mm -hmm. But when, when you... do, you, I don't think you kill those, do you? You just... No, you do kill them. You can, you can kill them, yeah. But they just stay like this, don't they? It's just the top disappears or something. I don't know. I'll no, to... the whole thing, the whole thing blows up. Okay. All right. So they're they're um, going to have to be destroyables as well. I will say that that laser screen is pretty much your design. I think I copied your your layout for that screen because I just couldn't get <laughs> I couldn't get one that I was happy with. So... Uh, good because that would have been <laughs> that, that that took me like the best part of two streams I think to get that um to get that right. Um, <laughs> this is Shrek background. Um, yeah, that would that would have been that would have been tricky to. Well, it wouldn't have been tricky. It would have just been time consuming, I think. So, uh... <laughs> there's the creatures three background. 
Oh, because it's three creatures. Yeah. I got it. Uh, I thought I thought I was really pleased myself when I did that. It's like, ah, got him. Okay, so yeah, here's here's a column you can go behind, can't you? So mm-hmm. so that needs a passable yeah. area to put into it. So I'm probably not gonna be able to get all the way through the map here, right? Oh no, because you can come up through here, can't you? Yeah, you you pretty much go over the top anyway, I think. Okay, so there is I think those might need shrinking down. I think they're one character higher than one line of pixels higher, aren't they? Uh yeah. So if we can shrink that down, that would be great because what's happening is it's treating any character that's that's not um, a space as collision. So it's treating this whole thing as collision. So if we can find a way to shrink that down just by one row, I mean, you could m- maybe remove this line here, you know, the blank line, uh, or you could change the curve slightly on it, I guess. Right. I'll add that to my list. Because that's what's causing... See how I'm kind of getting stuck here. I'm I'm trying to go and I just get stuck there, basically. And again, if I go up and down, the collision is saying, oh, no, that's that's a square that's got something in it. So, Uh, same with the particles. You're getting some duplication there, too, aren't you? Isn't, like, the second dome in? Oh, yeah, look how it's raised. Yeah, that's raised. That. that shoddy workmanship there. What was <laughs> I doing? That's that. So you probably saved probably saved a couple of characters there. Yeah, there we go. So it, it yeah, you're right. It's like oop, it's fast that scroll. Yeah, so that one needs nudging down as well. And that one there. Yeah, so those two. So yeah, I think if you just make that into uh two blanks above it there i don't know how you would do it i I think the simplest way is probably to move that blank line through it but that might ruin the style of it slightly so you might have to kind of you might have to play around with it a little bit uh maybe maybe move it down move it down and then remove the next line instead or something Mm. um but yeah that will save one two characters there and then four here so that's another six characters removed if we do that plus this this um this mine thing moving this into three squares will save loads because this is using one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen so yeah you'll save another four on that so that's like ten characters saved there Uh, and of course we're going to need those for things like these fans right because these fans have to move Mm. so we're going to probably need to get some animation frames for those as well and drop them in um i'll have a think about how to do that that might be something i just load somewhere else in memory and just change them on the fly um they might work they might just end up being dynamic objects much like the um the barrels and stuff where they they have a they have a piece of code which sets them up and says this is animated these are the frames use this I don't know. I'll have to have a think about that. Don't, don't worry about the fans for now. Yeah. I do need to get the frames, though, because I, I yeah, forgot about I, that. We'll need those at some point, I guess. Oh, I'm not going to be able to go. No, I'm not going to be able to get through here. Okay. Right. So I need to create passable yeah. areas for these. So, yeah, this is what I'm on about, about the this being a little bit of a problem for the masking system. So this is maybe what I should do next. Um Oh, why are they not exploded? Oh, because I haven't got any persistence set up for these screens yet. So I also have to have... So any time there are these on the screen, I have to have a, 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 a one of these files. Even if it has only has this import in it, it has to have something to give it some state. Otherwise, it doesn't have any state, and it doesn't know that I've removed a hit point from that object. So it's just, it just will sit there forever. Okay. Oh. One thing I would say is, because I have to, I have to go in about ten minutes. Yeah, is there any way you could soon. switch off the switch off the collision and just have a little mooch around? Uh, yes, I think so. Let's try. Let's let's have a go. So I should just be able to do it in the layer file, I think. Uh... 
think in here, I think in the controls, I should just be able to prevent. Yeah, it seems to get collision look up. It should get collision look up. Okay. Uh. Ah, there we go. Get blocked. There we go. Get blocked. So I'm not using hardware collision, so I have to make sure that I, I do this all. Checking like, it's like 12 points around the object, depending on which direction I'm moving in. Up to, well, up to six, I guess, if you move in diagonally, it's not going to be all 12 at once, but it's 12 different points of collision around the object. Right, okay, so let's try this out. Yeah, so I'm going to be able to move through everything now. So, so yeah, see, it does. I mean, it actually doesn't matter if you draw behind or in front. It, it's always going to look the same anyway because everything's white. Mm -hmm. um, but I have to draw behind to make sure. Uh, let's go through the map properly, though. Let's... I'm still getting hit by those bullets, though, but it's... I should still be able to move around. So what would you normally do? You would go the top way, wouldn't you, here? Yeah, yeah. I think there's a, there's a laser beam down there that stops you going okay. the bottom way. See, they're not too bad, these things. They don't look that bad, but I, I would like to get the masking working properly on these because I, I, yeah, I, I just want to get them working. I think it would look really good to get that working properly um one one point to note there is on this screen you have three other little enemies that bounce around and they yeah. also go behind those columns ah uh, okay that's going to be tricky to get them to mask properly um the other way to do this possibly is to build these out of sprites somehow I have a think. I mean, about could that. you have like vertically expanded sprites? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. There. Yeah. Actually, if I did a horizontally expanded sprite, would it fit across all of that? No, it probably wouldn't quite reach. But I could do vertical and horizontal, which would probably fill these two. So I'd only probably need four sprites here. Which would only really count as two because we'd have two sprites in the multiplexer, two sprites in the multiplexer, um, plus this player, plus the mace, and so, yeah, that that could work actually. Yeah, that might be the way to do it. I'll have to have a think about it because I think I can't remember where the the player character is in the in the sprite list. It might be in a weird place. Um, okay, so you come through all of this. There's these turret things here that we need to shoot. And here as well. And which way do you normally go? It's this way, isn't it? I normally go down to the, yeah, through there. Because this has the moving, doesn't it? I think, doesn't it have moving spike things? Yeah, here? yeah. And then there's, yeah. It's really nice to be able to fly through the entire level. It's good. Um, yeah, you don't lose the character of any of the screens. You know that it's like, oh, it's that screen. You know, it's, it's yeah, they're, they're nothing, instantly recognizable. Nothing been, yeah, nothing has been changed beyond beyond repair. That screen was a bugger. Can I just yeah? Say there's it? a lot in here, isn't there? Well, it's just the, the the horizontal. Those horizontal bars had to be offset by a character, and I'm using two by two tiles. Mm. So everything had to be sort of scrunched up vertically. 
So it was one of those screens that took like an hour to do. Oh, it's crashed again. I don't know why it's it crashes every now and again. I'm not sure what that's about. That's a bit annoying. Let's see if I can see anything in the stack trace. No, nope, it's actually properly a crashed device or something. Oh, it's <laughs> it's vice crash. Screen 52, I can jump straight to that pretty quickly, I think. Actually, I can do that through. You can just fly straight down, couldn't you, from the start position? Oh, yeah, of course I can go through stuff, can't I? But yeah, I think I'm going to call it a night soon as well. It's, uh, it's 10 past 12 now. This fog is horrible. I, 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 it definitely needs lime in it next time. I should sort out the uh, the red for that logo as well, because ever since you mentioned it, that we could do it with sprites. Yeah, sort of nagging at me. Down two screens and press one. There we go. So which way would you go? You'd go this way, wouldn't you? Um, the lasers are there. No, I would go wouldn't. around. I would actually go around. I would go to the left, and then going up the center of that screen is the worst place to go. So you'd wait. You'd make your way through oh, there how, and up. How? Hmm, see, this might now, be tricky. Yeah, that's the way it is in the original. Um, because that so is probably few, not going to fit. Yeah, there's a few situations like that where it's a, a bit of a squeeze. So I sort of left that screen for now. Uh, um, I mean, if we can move this wall one that way, that would solve it. Just uh, to get you through that. Just gap. so you can get that down there, yeah. Because you're going to need you're going to need exactly two high and, and too wide to be able to get through so my my suspicion there would be to move just move that laser beam to the right or put it up here instead it's... or put it Is against it... the wall yeah because it doesn't have to be it's the oddest little configuration anyway um yeah and even even the other one on the left the fact that it's horizontal and it's really close to uh to those little things that you shoot through it just seems bit odd the way that it's it's done like that but which way would you go now this way you'd go to the left i think um actually no you'd go you go to the right and you pick up some bits and bobs and then you'd come back this way so this is on the main path but you'd you'd take a little diversion off to the side oh, so, so this is that laser screen yeah Oh, that's right. This is where the things are moving around the platforms, aren't they? So yeah, that was another screen that was a bit of a bugger too. Okay, yeah, and then you'd grab those things. Okay, it's so good to see all the screens in. I'm loving it. Mm. I need to. I want to get these in soon. These are fun little things. Yeah, and that's the thing. There's so much stuff to do on every screen that you know. Once you've done one thing, you can. Isn't there a swarm the here map. as well? I think. Um, there is. is. There's yeah. a bunch of things flying around. Yeah, I think there's a bunch of Robotron, uh, Ujotron enemies flying around. There's a lot going on on that screen. And then this one, you can go behind, if I remember rightly. You can go through the middle. Yeah, you can't go through the the any other. These ones. It's just um, this one, isn't it? Yeah, it's just that path in the middle. Um, which saves you having to, it's an easy way to avoid the enemy that goes around it, basically. Um, yeah, that, that screen was quite easy to do, actually. It's quite easy to edit. <laughs> it's not going to be it easy to really code, I'll tell you now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's going to be a fun one to code if it's the one I think it is. And that's the only screen, if you go back, that's the only screen in the game that really nags my OCD because the entrance door and the exit door aren't level. Are they not? Normally the doors on those no. It had to be that way because of the screens on either side. 
So, yeah, I don't like the fact oh, that it's no, yeah. a little bit. It's not by a lot either, is it? It's like one no character. one's going to know. No one's going to know. Well, this is the best I could do. Yeah, because it had to be a certain thing. Ah, right. Band, and then you come back here position. and then. And you go up to the yeah, swarm. Oops. Yeah, it was. Uh, at this point, the swarm would start chasing. So I need to put the code in for that. At the moment, it's just a, an animation to to make the swarm work, which it kind of does. I think it looks all right. It's a it's an approximation of what it what was there. Uh, I think it works. Uh, I cannot remember where you go. There's a secret area, isn't there? Yeah, that bit there. That's right. Uh, switch there. some bouncing stuff in there and you go through that bit isn't it yeah yeah you can go up and then it takes you yeah it takes you across and then you go up and then you go into that little secret area lots of spoilers here i hope people are paying attention and taking notes <laughs> i never go i never go left there i always go right yeah yeah i always go through right and then i think i take the top path yeah i would always take the top there looking at that it looks horrible that bottom section That's got stars in it, if I remember rightly, as well. Which is... Actually, you know, you know what? I go down. I actually go to the bottom because that one takes you up to that screen. I think. Yeah. So I go. I go the other way. Actually, I do go down the bottom way. And then there's, I think, there's, there's a, a Robotron. Robotron. Yeah. Yeah. The Robotron it's... ones are going to be fun. I almost kind of want to do do a whole system just for doing those to make them to make them work properly i i i could use the multiplayer but i don't think it's going to be good enough um so i might have a play around and see what i can do because the screens are static because i can load coding on the fly mm. um i could potentially have something along the lines of um well actual you know llamatron and um whatever the yeah llamatron wasn't it on the DC well, where you where it's using lots of characters as well to do things. Um because I have the system set up to do that. And with the screen being fairly static, I don't think it'd be too difficult to do. Because I've I've also got dynamic uh scaling of the multiplexer on the particle system as well. So because each screen has its own code, I can tell the screen to say, okay, on this screen you can use twice as many particles, or on this screen you can only use half as many particles to, to free up more time um for other things uh, so for instance on that screen you could kind of reduce the multiplexer right down so if or even turn it off so it isn't even sorting uh, mm -hmm. and just use a character plotter and instead to plot things on that screen and um, that would work quite well i think uh you maybe 65 would do a top job on that yeah <laughs> yeah oh, i'd kill for raster rewrite buffer on this it would be amazing Okay, and that's bonus pod screen. Bonus pods there, okay. Yeah, so th these are going to be a bit weird, I think, because in this one, it's nice and in the center of this. But if we if we shift it, uh, if we shift it to like in the middle, it's going to be it's going to be offset. It's going to be weird. Yeah, um, it may have to be a sprite on certain screens if you've got the sprites to spare. Yeah, sprites are dynamically loaded as well. So there's a there's a handful of sprites that will stay the same. So for instance, uh, the the spaceship, um, uh, the the power ups, for instance, they 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 remain the same. Uh, everything else can be loaded in dynamically. So the laser, for instance, is not loaded and it's drawn dynamically. But but there's different screens can load whatever sprites they need in from the cartridge. So we're not actually limited to how much, uh, well, we are, but we're limited to like 512K minus mm. whatever the code is and the map is. Uh, but that gives us way more, um, way more sprites than we probably need. Oh, I'm near the end, aren't I? Near the... Yeah, yeah. close to go down. That's the final screen. You get the key here, don't you, I think? Yeah. 
or was it on yeah, the previous that's the one? Last, last Robotron screen. And then I don't know why I went over the top. I could have just gone through that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. Right. And then that takes me heavens knows where now. Let me have a look at where I am on the map. Yeah, it's probably way over to the left. But uh but yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna shoot off now. Yeah, I think I'm gonna stop now as well. I think it's been pretty good though. Thanks for joining, Andy. Anyway, uh, no it's problem. been, it's been really useful. Uh, say goodbye Thanks to Andy. Me. Chat. <laughs> nice one. Cheers, guys. All busy. See you later. Thank you. Okay. Bye bye. I'm pushing my pushing my microphone up like I'm finished as well. Uh, but yeah, I'm gonna call it a night there as well. So uh, I think that's uh, pretty good. It's good progress. I honestly thought it was going to take a bit longer to get this uh, this map working because of all the weird little things that I'm doing, uh, but it actually wasn't that difficult. So, yeah, we'll call it a night there. I think that's uh, just close enough. Um, thanks to Andy for, for coming along and, and helping me out with that. It was uh, nice to have somebody else on stream in my ear. It was an uh, unusual experience. For the first time in two years, I've had uh, somebody else talking on stream. Um, <laughs> thank you for the gifts of uh, True Tonis very much appreciated uh cheers with my gross vodka it really is horrible oh um right let's have a look who we can raid duke's on chalk's on because heroes is on chalk's play marbles on stream he's got a lot of people there as well let's let's go and add to it it's going to make chalk's stream even bigger um cool we'll go and raid him now then um yeah, thanks. Thanks for joining tonight. I hope you guys uh, have a go at the challenge. Uh, if you've got any questions, feel free to send me a message on Discord. Um, I'm I'm happy to help in any way I can. Anybody who's done the kaleidoscope spray will pretty much know what the drill is. Uh, if you're worried that your um, file is, you know, the, the things are not quite positioned correctly um, on screen, just send it to me and I can confirm that you're in the right place with the files. That's absolutely fine. If you want me to just confirm things, it's absolutely fine. Um, and yeah, good luck with that. Hopefully, uh, hopefully, uh, plenty of people enter, and um, so they, they will then go to a deserving person. Every every one has gone to a deserving person so far, so quite pleased. Right, let's raid chalk, and I shall see you all on uh, Saturday. Cheerio.